Chrono Cross is a timeless classic JRPG, probably one of the best of its genre. By saying timeless, there is no pun intended here. It's gorgeous, memorable, stunning, fun and addictive with its world, story and characters. I've been playing it for last couple of weeks, trying to do every side quest for each character that joins by my journey. And there is lot to cover. Normally I don't like to spoil about the story during my reviews. Even though I don't want to be detailed about these spoilers, I need to shove some footage from the second half of the game. Otherwise I only need to talk about the first 8 or 10 hours of the game and show 35% of story footage. Which would be quite boring in my opinion. But don't worry, I'm not going to spoil everything but the story progress just a tad bit. Just to get your attention for this masterpiece. Launched for PlayStation 1 by Square Enix around the late 1999, Chrono Cross received its remastered version called Radical Dreamers this year. Launched for all current consoles with a price tag of $20. It tells the story of a boy called Serge and two parallel existing worlds. As the persona of the player, Serge plays the role of a silent protagonist but often finds himself deciding on who he takes on his journey with the character's future and how they develop. If I were to say that Chrono Cross is one of those JRPGs where the choices actually change the outcome and the character that we form our party changes the flow, I wouldn't be so wrong. One day as Serge was adventuring so to say, he gets washed by the massive waves, only to find himself in an alternate world of his home world. Serge's home world and the alternate world has of course some changes like some of the cities are more militarized, some forests have poisonous areas and so on. Don't wanna spoil too much. And of course both world's inhabitants are quite sane, but due to their experiences, their personality can differ and it's up to players to experience. See, I'm not spoiling anything, am I? Once he finds himself in that alternate world, he soon learns that Surge from that alternate world died 10 years ago. Later on he gets chased by a special unit of dragoons only to be saved by a girl named Kit who is after an artifact called Frozen Flame. As the journey of Surge begins with Kit he soon finds himself chasing after a catman called Lynx. Yeah he's basically called a mountain cat also in Japanese. Such a unique name for a cat looking humanoid man isn't it? I love it. As the Surge's story starts each dialogue, each NPC is quite important as they lead to another step to their own quests, their stories. As you talk with an NPC within Surge's homeworld can also change the story of alternate world. Meaning Surge needs to change back and forth, speaking with both characters and trying to improve their life, their personality. Even some playable characters can be unlocked by doing this. So my advice? To use a walkthrough if you want to experience the whole game. I played this game like 16 years ago and missed a lot of shit back then. Trust me, even if you explore every inch of these beautifully designed pre-rendered maps, you will probably miss something if you don't use a walkthrough or something that will remind you the available items, characters, since there are insane amount of missable stuff. But this also makes this game a beautifully crafted RPG. During your journey you will encounter with choices, choices that would also shape which characters would join your journey. For example at some point of story you can choose to leave Kit behind. By doing this you can get one of the best characters of the game, Glenn. But if you choose to stick with Kit, Glenn never joins you. I mean until you start a new game plus and carry your stuff of course. Without any spoilers this is all I can say. But from now on begins the story moment that makes Chrono Cross a really and I mean really good game with a unique storytelling. At one point of the game, Surge and the villain character change their bodies and both Surge and the players begin to experience the world, events and characters from villain's point of view. Every member of villain faction will respect us as well as every other character will despise us. This is where Chrono Cross gets quite interesting and fun. Since the first part of the game my opinion was that Chrono Cross was a standard JRPG. But once this body change happens it turns into a twisted yet charming story with character developments, characters questioning the fate, seeing their same self from other world, Surge's effect on both time and the world. As I mentioned before the second part of the game especially during my current run hit different made me feel that Chrono Cross is more than a JRPG. The gameplay mechanic is a turn based JRPG but it does not use 
Getting experience to level up meta, but uses an element a bit complex star power up kinda system. With each defeated enemy, characters gain minor and sometimes major stat bonuses, such as health increase or resistance increase. But this additional stat bonus stops at some point. When this happens, players must continue the main story, beating a boss to gain a star symbol, which gives a massive boost to their stats and lets player to level up for that next tier. I can't say that I like this system and sometimes kill monster to get their experience to level up works. So why mess up the whole system like Final Fantasy VIII did, right? With each of these star bonuses, characters own elemental grid also expands, letting characters to carry more element, which is magic and spells of this game. Since Chrono Cross does not use typical mana point system, it depends on consecutive attacks to gather energy for these elements. Over 20 characters can join Surge on his journey. Some of these characters join by main quest and some of them by discovery or doing missable interactions, traveling between the home world and the alternate world. These characters do not have any class system since each character has an affinity for a role. Some characters are more focused on buffs and debuffs and some deal insane amount of damage. And unfortunately over 20 characters mean that there is also a tier amongst them. As far as I've tested, characters like Glenn, Karsh, Fargo really do hit like a truck, which makes them like an S tier. And some characters like Fungi, Korha and Wan do not bring anything to the table. So a character that you might like, end up as trash. You may still want to use them, but prepare to change your team formation if you get stuck by a boss and try to do a different approach. I might have talked about Chrono Cross a lot, but since this is a remaster, I also need to talk about Radical Dreamers edition and there is no way and I think not a single way that it's a decent remaster. Even though the visuals are clear and there are some quality of life aspects like god mode or making the game twice as fast, game itself suffers a weird FPS drop by its animations. I played it on my Xbox Series X and managed to finish the game but it seems especially PC version of it suffers even more. Actual problem is that animations do not feel smooth at all. I'm hooked to the visuals and story of Chrono Cross but I do feel that lots of people would struggle by this lazy remaster. It's quite sad actually when I think about all the masterpieces that Square Enix has. Chrono Cross has always been one of their treasured JRPGs yet such lazy remaster is not acceptable at all. I do get $20 for a remaster seems cheap but it also makes me think that Square Enix didn't care about its own franchise, so why should I? I do recommend Chrono Cross to everyone but about Radical Dreamers edition, I leave it to you. If you're on Steam, I wouldn't touch it due to the glitches and low FPS. Chrono Cross is a must play JRPGs of all time, definitely upon top 10. There are many things to speak, many scenes to show about Chrono Cross but I honestly don't wanna spoil anything further for you guys. It's a must play JRPG for anyone, even if you're a newcomer to JRPGs or a veteran.